A few days ago I showed you a video of this uh, 1954 Mitchell AM clock radio and as I demonstrated in the uh, other video the symptoms were uh, filter hum which means it needs uh, new capacitors and today we're gonna gonna attempt to repair this radio I'd like to show it to you and the, show you the repair process in real time but really don't have anybody to help me with the camera so we're just gonna make the best we can of this and hopefully you'll get something out of it I'm gonna start by removing the chassis which is gonna involve pulling the knobs off and removing these two bolts on the underside of the cabinet okay I've removed the chassis but not without some complications it seems that some jackass super glued the uh, clock knobs onto their shafts and, it, and this is one of those models that the clock remains attached to the chassis so therefore the clock knobs have to come off in order to get the get the chassis out and like I said some idiot glued the clock knobs onto their shafts so I had to ended up breaking the knobs getting it apart so I'm either going to have to super glue the knobs back together when I put the radio back together again I'm going to have to find some more knobs but that just just really irritates me when people do crap like that okay here's the top of the chassis you can see the tubes and the tuning capacitor, the variable tuning capacitor, the loop antenna, the IF transformers right here, here's your speaker and your audio output transformer, direct volume control and tuning so no dial strain to have to worry about, worry about here. Okay here's the underside of the chassis and this is the main thing I'm interested in at this point. This is the multi-section electrolytic filter capacitor in the power supply. And that's what's causing the hum that you heard in the previous video. And just for good measure, I want to replace these other paper capacitors here. You can see there's several of them in here. And I'm also going to replace the power cord. So let's get started on this okay here's the multi-section filter capacitor and according to the color code blue corresponds the blue wire corresponds to 50 microfarad 150 volt and the red wire corresponds to 30 microfarad 150 volt and the black wire is negative so we're just going to simply clip this out of here Okay, and there's your old bad capacitor. Okay, for, for size comparison, on the right you see the original capacitor that came out of the radio, and on the left you see the two modern capacitors that we're going to use to replace the original part. I've chosen a 47 microfarad at 250 working volts, to replace the original 50 microfarad at 150 working volts and I've chosen a 33 microfarad 160 working volts to replace the original 30 microfarad 150 volt section of the old capacitor. Now when replacing these capacitors you can go a few microfarads either above or below the original value and it's not going to hurt anything and as far as working voltage your replacement capacitor should have a working voltage that's equal to or greater than 
the working voltage of the original capacitor. So if the original capacitor has a working voltage of 150 volts, it's perfectly okay to use a replacement capacitor with a working voltage of 160 volts, 200 volts, 250 volts, whatever. But you should never use a replacement capacitor with a lower working voltage. For example, you wouldn't use a 47 microfarad 100 volt capacitor to replace a 50 microfarad 150 volt capacitor. If you did, your replacement cap would go belly up in short order and you just have to you just have to re-repair your radio so you might as well fix it right the first time and be done with it okay here are the three wires that we're going to solder to the blue wire goes to the 47 microfarad cap red wire to the 33 microfarad cap and our black wire goes to ground and before I go any further I need to emphasize something. Electrolytic capacitors are polarity sensitive. It's very important that they be wired in the circuit correctly. On new capacitors, the negative end or the negative terminal is generally indicated by a, by a band with an arrow inside the band or a negative symbol inside the band that points to the negative terminal. This negative terminal should always be wired to the negative terminal of the circuit that the capacitor is being used in. If you wire one of these in backwards, you're going to have quite an unexpected surprise in the form of the capacitor possibly blowing up, as well as causing injury to yourself and the piece of equipment that you're working on. Now whenever I replace an electrolytic capacitor in a radio like this, there are several methods I can use to mount the, the, the new capacitor. The first method is to unsolder these wires completely from the tube socket pin and just solder the new parts directly to the tube sockets. Or, I could solder a terminal strip here mount the new capacitors to the terminal strip and solder these wires to the terminal strip or I could solder these wires directly to the terminals of the new capacitor making sure that they're soldered good and each terminal is insulated so they don't become friendly with something else and mount the new capacitor to the old capacitor mounting clip and in this case it would probably be necessary to use cable ties or some other mounting scheme to make sure these don't wiggle around. That's the main thing I'm interested in, making sure the electrical connections are good and solid and that the parts are not wiggling around all over the bottom of the chassis. To me that's just unprofessional and it's certainly not neat. So let's do this. Okay, I've got all of our wires bent back into a U-shape as well as the terminals on the capacitor. I'm just going to simply attach these, attach the appropriate wire to the correct connection and then crimp the uh, terminals to make a good mechanical connection. And then I will solder it in place. And I will use this little bit of black electrical tape on each terminal to insulate the, uh, each connection. Normally I like to use heat shrink tubing for that purpose. It's, it's a lot neater, but I'm embarrassed to say I'm out of heat shrink tubing. I've got to order some more, but I'll try to be as neat as possible with the electrical tape. Okay, there's our negative lead attached and soldered in place. All I have to do now is, is wrap a very small amount of electrical tape around that to prevent any possible short circuits. And I will do the exact same thing with the remaining two leads. Okay, and here's the new filter capacitor already installed. And I think just for the heck of it, I'm going to power this up through my variable isolation transformer and, and see what happens. 
Okay, I've got this plugged into my Heath kit isolation transformer which has a variable output from 0 to 150 volts AC and it sounds like it's warmed up. I'm running it right now at a little less than 90 volts. Let's turn this fluorescent light off and get rid of some of the interference. Now I'm running a full 120 volts. Something that greatly encouraged the customer and his wife. Since it was so encouraging, my friend listened to it for several days. Between two different visions of where the Democrat Party ought to One is the Clintons. Okay, not bad at all. And now we have to replace the other capacitors for improved performance and maximum safety and replace this old power cord that has some cracked insulation in it, but I have the lead separated enough for a test. Okay, let's continue.